Okay, in this presentation we are going to look at Poisson random variables and how we would work with them in R. This is an, uh, is an introduction to R for actuarial students and this corresponds to the CS1B curriculum. That comprises Introduction to R Programming and Fundamentals of Statistical Analysis. This is question one from the paper, okay, or corresponds to that. Assume that X is a random variable which follows a Poisson distribution with rate parameter lambda is equal to 2. Okay, that's what that is telling me, where x equals 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 10. Now, just actually, we're dealing with this in the context of this question, how we're going to be looking at this question. x can take values outside of that range of values. It can take the value 0, and it can take the value 11, and so on. There's no upper limit, but we'll just work with the values from 1 to 10 for the question. Okay, just to be clear about that, it's just a sort of, we're using that this to create plots later on. That's all. Just to sort of make that a standard definition. Calculate the probability for each of the values of x. Calculate the cumulative probability for each of the values of x. And draw a graph of the distribution function of x. So first off, we're going to set up our values of x, 1 to 10. This is a sequence of values. The lower bound is 1, the upper bound is 10. And what that gives us is a sequence of integers between 1 and 10, which is exactly what we want. Also, we're going to specify lambda here is equal to 2. We'll just sort of save that. Now, the probability mass function, probability of x equal to x, is what we're looking at here. Now, just remember, this is a discrete random variable, so probability mass function. So, what we're going to use here is d plus, and specify the values we're looking for, the, the corresponding probabilities of, whoops, and you know the the additional specifications for that probability distribution uh that's them there we won't really have to don't really have to say that much about them we have the probabilities there and that's that's it just as a remark again this is a, is a discrete random variable so this is a probability mass function but if it was a continuous random variable we would have a probability density function and d whatever that would be d norm it'll, d norm or d couch g or something like that that would be a probability density function there, which gives us the height of a curve. So just watch out for that, okay? D for density, because usually these variables are continuous random variables. So we have the cumulative distribution function, probability of x less than or equal to x, and very similar, it's just P pos rather than D pos, okay? So this corresponds to the probability of x equal to zero, and probability of x equal to 1 combined. This is the probability probability of x equals 0, 1, and 2. And you can sort of tell by the process of a deduction that if you subtract one from the other, the probability of x equal to 2 is about 27%. Okay. That's it. Um, this is not part of the question, but it's sort of interesting to know this. What we could do if we needed the probability of x greater than or equal to x is use lower tail equals false. Okay, and uh, so essentially just add that additional argument and essentially what that does is it gives us the complement of that there, the cumulative distribution function. Okay, now just as an important thing, it's the probability of x greater than x, not the probability of x greater than or equal to x, it's greater than x. Okay, so the values we have down here are complements of what we have here. Okay. So just watch out for that. Um, so that's that important remark. Um, in the case of discrete probability distributions, you have to be very careful about that. Because you might look at that and sort of th think, you know, that is a probability of x greater than or equal to x. You know, x or more. But no, just watch out for that, how it's specified in R. So our plots. So first off, we can specify... Just actually as a quick remark, x, usually what we have here in the x-axis, we specify first, okay? And on the y-axis, we have p plus, okay? Now, the fact that x equal is essentially indices from 1 to 10 means that we don't actually have to specify it here. It does it automatically, that if you don't specify uh, an x variable in plot, it just automatically assumes that, you know, you look it's indices okay so we'll put in indices so what we have here is the indices from 1 to 10 okay 
Now we could put in one to ten there originally, but it's a sort of bit redundant. At the uh, put them in here at the start. So this is the y variable. It's the probabilities. Okay, it gives us the height of the curve, and then we just plot them. Plot x and y. Okay, so x is sort of assumed to be the indices by default. Y is the probability, and there we have our points. Just as a remark, we can make our plots nicer to look at by adding some additional specifications. The plot character here is 18, the color equals red, and the character size is twice the default. Okay, CEX equals 2, which means twice the default size. So we just doubled the usual size. Okay. Also, it's not really correct to uh, join them by a line. Remember, this is a discrete random variable. So you know, you might sort of think, oh, like, let's just add a line there and just make it look normal, look proper. That would not be the proper thing to do for a discrete random variable. It would be perfectly fine and perfectly acceptable and perfectly desirable to do that for a continuous random variable, but not for a discrete random variable. There are actually other very nice visualizations that would be appropriate here that are, are well worth looking at, but we'll go into those another time. Uh, so that's our exercise finished with, really. So just as a sort of quick remark, I'll just try out something different here. Rather than the cumulative distribution function, what we can do here is just plot the probability mass function from, of x from 1 to 10. So dpos, uh, change the color, blue, change the plot character, 16. So that's just a sort of complementary plot. And likewise, when we have lower tail equals false, the upper tail probability we can also have a look at, see what that looks like. Uh, not that it's massively important, to be honest with you, but it's just to sort of, like, you know, push yourselves a bit. All right, we'll leave it there.